I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are just two days to the end of the month. Actually, the month ends tomorrow. Praise God. And hey, God has been so good. Despite everything that's been happening around us, God has kept his faithfulness just like he always does. It's in his character. Praise God. So you as a child of God, you ought to take advantage of his faithfulness. Take advantage of it. Paul said to Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He was telling Timothy, take advantage of the grace that is in Christ Jesus. This is not the time to sorrow. This is not the time to, to just, just be in a bad mood. No, this is not the time to complain. This is the time to look up to God and believe His Word. And I believe in my heart that God is ready to bring a miracle to you within these two days. I believe that strongly. If you release your faith and believe Him again, praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Are you ready to make that demand? You need this, praise God. So join me right now and release your faith. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It is coming to me in Jesus' name. I receive from you everything I need to end this month well. Bills paid, and I have plenty more in store. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we have been talking about entering into God's rest. And I just want to remind you, even as the month is ending tomorrow, that we have our prayer and fasting meeting on the 1st. Actually, it begins on the ninth of the last day of the month, which is tomorrow. The ninth, the midnight, tomorrow's midnight. You understand what I'm saying? Tomorrow is 30th, breaking into first, that midnight. And then we're going to be fasting and praying, and then we're going to be meeting via Zoom. Please take note of this announcement. We're going to be meeting via Zoom, and then we're going to be praying at every watch. Plan for this. God has something great for us in the month of July. And we're entering the second half of the year. So this is not a meeting you should plan to miss. Praise God. God is taking you into his rest. Praise God. So well, I've been sharing all month. You see, we share these things and we take all this time for this reason. That you will be grounded, like Paul said, to share these things again or to write unto you concerning these things is nothing to me, praise God. It is because he wanted them the same way I want you to have a footing, a grounding in these truths, praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I've been sharing with you about entering his rest. Now, I want to share with you today the crux of the matter. You see, in Hebrews chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 3, everything I've been teaching you, this is the most vital part. You know, sometimes in school, you, the teacher wants to teach you a formula. And then he begins to start by giving stories and stories. You know, sometimes like, look, all these stories, just give us a formula, let's cram it. <laughs> just give us the formula let's cram it no it doesn't work that way you can use that to pass the exam but you will never understand the purpose of that formula in the first place you won't understand it so you can't you can't apply it in any other area that's why sometimes people have gone to school and now they are wondering how do we use algebra in our day-to-day -day living how do we use um, um, the almighty formula. You know, you, you, you hear people say those kind of things. But we do. 
<laughs> Praise God. We do. We don't quote it. Okay, to solve this problem, you just told me now. We need to apply the Almighty formula. No. But you see, if you begin to find the root, how did that formula come in, come about in the first place? You will get a lot of wisdom. I'm saying this to tell you: pay attention to every wisdom that supports a thing. With that attitude. You can apply the wisdom to everything you will face in life today or tomorrow. Praise God. So I'm sharing with you today the crux of the matter. Now, this is the formula. Praise God. This is the formula. All this while I've been telling how we derive at this formula. But this is the formula. Now, verse 7, Hebrews chapter 3. He says, Therefore, the Holy Spirit says I love it when he says the Holy Spirit says you know in John he kept saying he that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit is to render the Holy Spirit what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches now if you have ears then you need to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying now praise God so therefore as the Holy Spirit says today not tomorrow today if you will hear his voice. I love that statement. Today, if you will hear his voice. Now, you know, it's amazing. Now, he said that here, right? He says, today, if you will hear his voice, you know, harden your heart into the rebellion and, you know, and all that and all that. Now, he goes on to say, Thank you, Holy Spirit. He goes on to say in verse 15. Now that was verse 7 we read. Now he goes on again after teaching them and saying, he goes on again in verse 15 and say, While it is said, while it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion then he goes on in the next chapter verse chapter 4 and again in verse 7 he says again let me read verse 7 again he designated in a certain day saying in david today after such a long time as it has been said today if you will hear his voice in the space of two chapters, the writer kept repeating this phrase, if you will hear his voice, if you will hear his voice. Why was he, why was he just saying it? Now, you know, when someone is talking and is really making emphasis on, on, on something, you should, you should look at that thing closely. If you will hear his voice. Now, he used the word, if you will hear. If you will hear, he never said today if he will speak to you. No, he didn't say that. Rather, he says, if you will hear. What does that mean? That means the problem is not with God speaking. The problem is you hearing. God is always speaking. You see, God has a responsibility to man to make sure that his word comes to man. Why does he have that responsibility? Because he designed man to live by his word. Oh. You know, sometimes you're like, why do you interject, you know, you're, you're talking, you just interject with speaking in tongues i'm not just speaking in tongues i'm speaking in the spirit praise god yes because sometimes what you want to express english does not qualify it in in the very truth that it is so when when we when we exclaim in tongues like that we just let out a strong word and then by the Spirit, we begin to seek bit by bit 
um, understanding or interpretation of what we have just said. Interpretation and not translation. Praise God. So we, we begin to receive that. Then we we'll begin to give it out. Or even to yourself, you begin to understand it. So I said the problem is not about God speaking. The problem is you hearing. The reason I said that is because God who have designed man to live by every word that proceeds from his mouth. That is the light, that is the design of the soul that the living soul that God created. Man is meant to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. What does that tell you? Man begins to die when he stops receiving words from the mouth of God. So it is the, the life energy that sustains man is from the mouth of God. Just as God, knowing that man will live by oxygen, have made it so abundant in the earth that it will take great effort from you to live or to be in a place without oxygen. You understand what I'm talking about? There is no atmosphere that doesn't have oxygen except you get into a place where it has been conditioned that the oxygen in the atmosphere can be extracted and you know what that means. You know the technology that will be put in place. You know the, the, the work, the brain work that will be put in place for such to happen. But as for God, he has freely made oxygen to be available because man needs ox oxygen to live. So also, brothers and sisters, Beyond the abundance of oxygen we see in the atmosphere, there is great supply of God's word. Praise God. I'm telling you the truth. There is great supply of God's word. There is no environment that doesn't have God's word. There is no place on the face of this earth and even in heaven that God's word doesn't come. None. So the question is not about him speaking. It will be wicked of him, having created man to live by his word, to now make the word to become scarce. Are you seeing that? It will be wicked of him. So brothers and sisters, God is always speaking. He's always speaking. He's always speaking to you. He's always speaking. Everyone, everyone. I, I'll tell you, oh, what about those who, who, who have not uh, um, uh, obeyed his word? What about, in, and now see, he said those who have not obeyed his word. So the word came and they did not obey it. See, the word has to come first before he says somebody did not obey. So it wasn't God. God did not hold back his word. Oh, what about uh, places where they don't know God? Even in places where they don't know God, God speaks. Oh, the, he, he speaks. You remember the Bible says when, when, when fools misbehave, they, be, they, they get afflicted and they suffer all manner of things. And then they cry to God in their affliction. What does God do? He sent his word. And that's God's response, brothers and sisters. That's his response to everything. He sends his word. When you cry, oh God, he sends his word. When you are sick and you need deliverance, he sends his word. When you are alone and you say, oh, what, what's going on? He sends his word. He sends his word all through the universe. Praise God. Oh, he sends his word. Now go to the moon. The word of God is there. I can't buy a double Anywhere you find yourself, there is no place both in heaven and here on earth that the word of God is not available. 
Even before man was created, the word of God was working on the earth. Even the oxygen you breathe is functioning. The, the source of the oxygen is the word of God. Did you know that? Praise God. Yes. So he began to say today, today, right now, it doesn't matter the situation you find yourself right now whatever you were thinking before now whatever hardship you think you're facing whatever confusion you think you are in right now instead of trying to crack your head and 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 deliberate on how to solve all these things he is giving you the truth and what is the truth if you will hear his voice. If you will hear his voice. That's what the Spirit of God is saying to you today. He didn't say, if you will allow me to speak to you. No, he will speak. If you will hear. If you will hear. Are you willing to pay attention to his voice today? There is no prayer anybody's going to pray for you so that God will speak to you. Ah, nah. His word is already available. If you listen, you will hear him. And I'll tell you this truth, you don't really need anybody to hear God for you. You don't. Because he's speaking. And when he speaks, his word is directed to you, not someone else for you. He will use someone else because he's trying to get to you. So he will speak to you in your dream. He will speak to you in visions. He will speak to you by that inward witness. You know what we call that strong? I just have this strong impression in my heart that this is what I should do. Or a, a knowledge. I have all, I've told you this many times. You know, that God, God's word increases your knowledge. God's word increases your wisdom. God will speak to you about things you don't know. What do I mean? This is because sometimes people say something just came to my mind. That's something that came to your mind. Did it increase wisdom? Did it increase your knowledge? Did it make you become sober? Or in place of soberness, did it embolden you to do what is right? See that now? That's God speaking to you. And sometimes, you know, some people say, oh, you know, I was reading the Bible and the scripture just jumped out. You know what I mean, jump out. Or sometimes you're walking and it's not like you're trying to crack your head and remember scripture. Now, those are for those who have spent their lives around the scriptures. So a scripture will just come to you, like something was thrown at you. Or sometimes you can hear, you're just doing your thing and suddenly you just hear your, your pastor's voice. It's like, it's like your pastor is reminding you something. It's like your pastor is preaching a message to you. That's not your pastor, praise God. That's his voice. That's his voice. What does God's voice sound like? There is no sound to God's voice. It is you receiving his word. So does the God's word, when God's word comes, it sounds like the voice of many waters. No, sir. Not all the time, praise God. Not all the time. You see, such things as to how you receive or how you hear has a lot to do with where you are, the environment you find yourself. There are many ways in scriptures God has spoken. But the most important thing is not how he was speaking. The most important thing is the one who's receiving his word, knowing that the word of God has come to me and I have heard it and I have received it. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Will you open your heart today and say, Lord, I know you've been speaking, but now I pay attention and I listen for your voice. If you will do that right now, I'm telling you the truth. You see that situation you're in, whether it's concerning your health, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Whether it's concerning your finances, whether it's concerning your career, if you would just get to the right now, right now, because this is an hour of faith. If you would just say, Lord, I believe you. I believe you're speaking. Now I want to pay attention to hear you. I'm telling you the truth. The word of the Lord will come to your heart. You will hear him. And what it is, says, do not harden your hearts. 
he will speak. And when he speaks, obey what he's telling you to do right now. And watch how you are going to be catapulted into his rest. My time is up today. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.